The Supreme Court crippled the Voting Rights Act last month, removing key protections that prevent discrimination against minority voters. But really, the problems with our elections go far beyond the racial discrimination that underpin the need for the Voting Rights Act. And election reformers are trying to highlight this fact, pushing for broader election reform to fundamentally change how we elect our representative government. Chris Novoselic, the chairman of the board at fairvote.org. Insiders, partisan hacks, they use sophisticated demographic cartography technology and they basically carve out these districts and they're, they're these crazy gerrymanders. It's like a, a drunk man with a, a etch-a-sketch, you know? It just, just looks terrible, okay? And so we're, we're saying that if you pay taxes and if you're subject to the laws and rules of the land, that that merits representation so everybody can have representation. Now, the state of Pennsylvania is a perfect example of what these etch-a-sketch districts look like. It has 18 congressional districts, and those districts are drawn by the state legislature, meaning they are drawn to the advantage of whichever party controls the state legislature. If Republicans control the state, then they'll draw the districts that benefit Republicans by marginalizing Democratic voters. That's what happened in 2010. So that in 2012 elections, even though Democratic congressional candidates won 83,000 more votes than Republican congressional candidates, Republicans still walked away picking up 13 out of 18 seats in the state. In other words, the majority of voters in Pennsylvania aren't getting the representation they voted for. Drew Spencer, staff attorney with fairvote.org. Currently, we're using this winner-take-all regime. Most legislative bodies are elected from single-seat districts. So there'll be a, a little geographic area and you vote there and if th you're not in the, in the plurality of people that happens to elect a candidate, then you're just out of luck. You basically are going to have no representation. Now an alternative to this current system is something called proportional representation or fair voting. Rather than 18 gerrymandered districts in Pennsylvania each choosing one representative, you could have five districts with each electing between three and five representatives. This way, it won't be winner take all, but instead candidates will be elected based on the proportion of the votes they receive. Under a proportional representation system, instead of focusing so much on the geographical district, we're going to expand the area that's covered and allow people to, in a sense, district themselves uh, with their votes. So if you have a three-seat district, for example, every third of the population will get a representative based on how they voted. No longer having to win the majority of the vote, these reforms could make it a lot easier for third parties to grab congressional seats. They can also limit the influence of money in our elections. You generally have to outspend your opponent, so there's this race to the top. Uh, under a fair voting, fair representation voting system, instead, you're going to be electing three, four, or five candidates from an area. So you don't have to spend the most in the race. But that might also be why there's so much opposition to election reform, from the two major parties as well as the special interests that are flush with cash. Still, the election reformers are pressing on. The Constitution does not specify how states have to elect their congressional representatives. And in fact, for the first 50 years of the country, we saw states electing their congressional representatives by a variety of creative methods. So all Congress would have to do is, right now, they actually require every state to elect by single seat districts. They don't have to do that, though. By changing that statute alone, it would open the door to states being able to experiment again. You choose who represents you, not some insider committee drawing these gerrymander maps. And that's a powerful message. Now, there are issues a lot sexier than election reform. Issues like wealth inequality, anti-war, civil liberties. But considering how we vote underpins every other issue, then maybe we should all pay a lot more attention to the election reformers. In Washington, Sam Sachs, RT.